Welcome everyone to our special Memorial Day weekend edition of Friday Facts. Welcoming you to the North Carolina Serious Illness Coalition event. So excited to talk with Dr. Nicole French from the Veterans Bridge Home. I don't want to take any of your time. I want to shoot it right over to my colleague, Connie Bonebreak, who's going to lead us today and just take a moment to Put your name and your organization in the chat line and don't hold back uh, asking any questions and we'll both keep an eye on the chat. And with that, Connie, take it away. Good morning, Heather and everyone. Um, thank you, Heather and the coalition for this opportunity to be in conversation and to learn about Charlotte-based Veterans Bridge Home, uh, particularly on this Friday, which is the Friday before Memorial Day. You know, um, as summer arrives for all of us and it warms up here in North Carolina, um, Memorial Day provides us an occasion to commemorate um, some of America's uh, largest, most um, valued heroes. Um, those individuals who served, fought, suffered, and today we remember those who died, who gave the ultimate sacrifice for the principles of our democracy. Um, this weekend, though, also brings to mind the more than 620,000 veterans who are currently living in North Carolina and who continue to be impacted um, because of their time and service to this country. And so this morning, we are honored to be here, uh, to be here and to hear from uh, Dr. Nicole French. Dr. French is a licensed clinical psychologist and she practices her profession as the clinical director at Veterans Bridge Home. If you don't know Veterans Bridge Home, you're about to learn about it. Um, she is also a community behavioral health consultant and a uniformed Army Reserve psychologist. Thank you, Dr. French, for your um, service. She works closely with local health care providers across health systems and community services providers addressing social determinants of health and in support of local and statewide public health initiatives focused on reducing premature death, including suicide, and promoting resilience and post-traumatic growth. So welcome, uh, Dr. French. May I call you Nicole? Of course. Good morning. It's really nice to be here with all of you. Thank you. Um, Nicole just told me she's taking some uh, time to relax in the mountains of North Carolina near Asheville. And so thank you for um, carving out this time to be with us. Oh, of um, course. Before, absolutely, before we hear about your work at Bret Veterans Bridge Home, um, we'd love to just to get to know Nicole. Could you Tell us about your background. Um, you shared that you, while on active duty for nine and a half years, that you worked with professionals from a lot of different disciplines and garnered a lot of different experiences that we'd like to hear more about. Sure. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you this morning. And um, my my paternal grandparents uh, were retired Air Force. So uh, my dad was a military brat and they really enjoyed service. And so I did grow up hearing about, um, you know, serving our country in a variety of different ways with a, you know, embodied kind of sense of patriotism. But I never really considered um, serving myself until I was looking for scholarship funds, honestly, for my doctorate in clinical psychology. So um, the Army was the only branch to offer a scholarship when I was looking. And so um, I, I decided to apply. And um, I honestly thought I would do kind of three years active duty and then finish my time out in the reserves, five years. So every contract is about eight year commitment. Um, but I think, you know, my first assignment was in Germany, Heidelberg, Germany, which I was very fortunate and privileged to be there. Um, I had friends, you know, all over, including Fort Liberty, you know, North Carolina, right. Um, training all the time and someone had to go to Heidelberg. Um, but I deployed from Heidelberg, Germany to Iraq. And um, I think that's really when my identity like uh, 
you know, was really transformed into a soldier mentality. So I came in as a clinician wanting to continue my education. I got fa fantastic training. And then, you know, once you deploy and train, um, I think there's just, you know, I've, I've wanted to continue service and giving back. Um, I was in, uh, worked with recruiting command for five years after I was at a hospital in, in Germany. And, um, I supported recruiters really all over the world, um, supported command and really supporting their own kind of mental health as they went, they went really often from the field into schools and into communities like ours, um, serving, trying to, um, you know, educate families on what it means to serve and inviting, you know, our, our youth to serve. Um, I really enjoyed that work. Um, after five years though, I think I wanted a little bit more stability myself and I ended up getting off of active duty and choosing Charlotte. I was licensed in North Carolina. My parents were in Greenville, South Carolina, um, and so when I moved to Charlotte, I had one friend with whom I'd gone to graduate school and, um, through that network, which is really important, <laughs> I was looking for a job and, um, I met, um, a wonderful like man who went to school with our founder, Tommy Norman. Um, so he's like, you're a psychologist and like, your military, like I need to introduce you to Tommy Norman. So in my own transition, as I consider different options, um, you know, I met the Normans and they're like, there's so much work to do here in the community. You could go to work for the VA, but we need you. Um, and I really did fall in love with the mission of Veterans Bridge Home um, and ended up they didn't have a job at the time I met Tommy Norman, but we were in the throes of standing up kind of an initial pilot, um, bringing technology and thought leadership together. Charlotte was a very well-connected um, community, uh, veteran friendly, but not necessarily veteran savvy. And so, but we were connected. And so it was, we were the second, you know, um, community in the nation really to, to have this pilot. So I, I digress, but I am grateful to like, I guess one thing about me is finding ways to do my work in places I love and to be able to build community wherever I am. I do love travel. I have learned as a clinician, how important it is to take good care of ourselves um, I think that's another thing, like when I think about how did I end up in this field? Well, we all have our own various reasons, right? We're choosing healthcare. And I think as we mature and grow, we kind of learn what some of those underlying reasons are. And hopefully all of us like are on that journey of taking, you know, really good care of ourselves too. And it's just a delight to be able to align, you know, my work, um, with places and in communities because you know our work as healthcare professionals do can be done anywhere so i'm grateful to be in north carolina and uh live i live in charlotte we veterans bridge home serves you know the state so um and really the carolina is part of south carolina too so that's a little bit about me Thank you for that. And I loved what you said about Charlotte was veterans friendly, but not veterans savvy. Um, that's, that's, I think maybe perhaps we're all on the journey to become more veteran savvy, those of us who um, don't work directly with veterans. So, you know, some of our listeners may not be particularly familiar with Veterans Bridge Home. And so in our journey to become more veteran savvy, would you please tell us about, um, that organization and your role there? Of course. Um, so Veterans Bridge Home was founded by the Normans um, in 2011, and they were getting calls. Um, Tommy Norm Norman was a Vietnam era veteran, and um, they were getting calls from uh, post 9-11 veterans, their family members, hey, I've got a wounded warrior, can you support? And um, 
they, I mean, the Normans have, are, have always been so generous with their Rolodex of contacts. You know, Tom used to have a, an office co-located with us and he'd have like five Rolodexes behind, you know, on the table behind him. And I think it's um, what we realize is we all, you know, as humans, we need that network of connections. Well, with military moving around so much, it's like, how do you invite, you know, uh, veterans into our community and give them the supports so they can get settled and actually give back, right? Use their talents, use their um, training to make our community stronger. And that is our mission. Um, you know, when you take off that uniform, um, you need a new mission. Um, you know, in, when you are in uniform, you have a mission and the military makes it very easy to, with wraparound supports on any military installation, um, you have everything you need. You have schools, you have childcare, you have um, shopping, everything you need is on post. Um, when you, you know, take off that uniform, it's a little disorienting. Like, where do I find these things that I need? Um, where do I, do the basics like get healthcare. Where do I go to find healthcare, education, um, schools? Uh, so, Veterans Bridge Home um, is really designed to be kind of that one stop shop and providing that navigation to um, resources in community. Um, we we need friends, we need community, we need jobs, and we need wraparound supports to be able to actually settle in and give back. So our programming is really aligned with um, that focus. We have an employment program that works with companies who want to hire and retain military and veteran families. Um, so we also make by name like connections for service members, veterans and their families looking for employment with companies. Um, we also have a community engagement team that really cultivates, uh, cultivates opportunities for community members just committed to supporting service members, veterans and their families. So whether that's through volunteering, whether that's just having a cup of coffee, we we. Um, really cultivate opportunities for connection and to learn more about military service, to provide opportunities for um, that cross-pollination, really. Because um, more and more, fewer people have served, and it's really hard to know how to start those conversations. And um, so community engagement is, is one of our primary programs. Another uh, really our third um, program really is that care coordination. So um, care coordination across social determinants of health. So we are um, having whole health conversations with every veteran or family member that touches us. And we are identifying what's important to them and making connections to community providers in the community. Um, so we are a part of the housing collaborative, for example, in Charlotte, we have housing our heroes, um, a, a by name list of those experiencing homelessness, or like we are, we also have another program, like, um, we got ARPA funding through the county, um, to support individuals in Mecklenburg County who are at risk for housing instability and losing housing. So, um, we connect veterans to benefits. I understand that is one thing that a lot of you and us, I mean, in general, it's very complicated. Benefits are very complicated. Um, so everyone we meet, we do a basic screen and, um, but it starts with benefits. Like, when did you serve? Um, are you connected to uh, the VA? Do you know what your benefits are? Um, and then, you know, kind of look at those, everyone needs kind of a mission or employment or education, um, but what is what is important to individuals? We actually have a special program to connect folks to mental health care um, and health care in general. Um, so, and then we work within these collaboratives um, across the state to identify, like we wanna know who are the best providers 
um, in education, you know, in, in benefits across really social determinants of health. And then we use that network to make swift connections. Um, that's a, a high level view of our programming. I'm going to ask you uh, two questions coming to mind, but sure. uh, let me go with this one first. So many people on this call are probably very familiar with NC360. So um, the Unite Us platform, would you just give a smidgen of history of how that relates to Veterans Bridge Home? Yes. So, um, so NC Care 360 um, was really the, the pilot for that program was NC Serves. And back to 2015, Charlotte was identified as a community that was ready for technology because of the connections that existed uh, between service providers. I mean, we were working together, but we needed a way to communicate effectively together. So really the, the veteran military community was that pilot community. So Unite Us, uh, Veterans Bridge Home was the backbone organization for this pilot. And we worked with the Institute for Veteran and Military Families in Syracuse, at Syracuse um, to kind of implement this technology into our provider network. And so um, that really evolved into the state paying for this technology for all health and human service delivery. So as you all know, if some of you have used it, I mean, this is a a work in progress in terms of um, really educating providers to use it and how to use it to best really connect folks swiftly. Um, I'd love to hear more about your experience, but here we are. Here we are. We have a list of providers across the state. Um, it's easy to search for who's doing what. Um, we have a way to really measure. Um, you know service delivery, what are people asking for, um, which is really beautiful, and who's responding to those needs, which providers are responding to those needs. Um, and we have a way to securely communicate um, with one another, you know, come, as a healthcare professional and, and working, you know, in the hospital, you know, there's our, um, we have an electronic medical record, right? And so, um, we have a lot of systems in place in community care. Um, it is really much harder to communicate and share information kind of securely. And so this referral platform really does, um, I think, um, you know, we're at the throes of kind of uh, establishing a standard of care and community outside of those healthcare settings and I have a way of communicating Um between, um, you know, which is, which is beautiful. We're always going to have challenges with technology systems talking to one another, but I see like the Unitas platform, um, a tool that many or community organizations just didn't have access to. And it's just, it's really afforded us the ability to connect more families to those service, um, organizations and providers. And someone in the chat asks, are you only in the Charlotte area? So no, Veterans Bridge Home um, serves the triad, the triangle and the sand hills. So 49 counties in North Carolina and about 12 counties in South Carolina as well. We work with another veteran service organization called Veteran Services of the Carolinas. Um, they have a lot of different programs across the state, but we're really sister organizations. They also were a part of that initial pilot in 2015 uh, with NC Serves. And the two, you know, we, have, we both really operate as coordination centers and um, are involved in community. So we can support any veteran or family member that you touch, um, I really encourage you to consider making a referral to Veterans Bridge Home um, because we want to connect that individual to community. It is so important. I mean, even as I, you know, when I transitioned out of the military, I don't think I recognized, even though intellectually I know how important community is, I did not 
recognize the importance of staying connected to my military community. Um, and, uh, you know, and this is a diverse community, um, you know, Veterans Bridge Home, it's important, you know, we, we want to get to know all of you on the call. You don't have to be a, a veteran or have a need to have served. Many of you have roots of, um, in military service, service somewhere, like with grandparents serving or whatever, um, but it's so critical. So as we invite people to, hey, um, are you interested in engaging in community and even giving back? I think that's the other thing. A lot of veterans are very proud. They don't think they need help. They are self-sufficient. Um, but if you invite them to give back, and if you say, hey, you may not need anything right now, but there may come a day when you are going to want options for health care. And do you know what your options are? And now is the time to determine what your benefits are. I encourage you to explore. And Veterans Bridge Home, Veteran Services of the Carolinas, we can make those connections. Another thing is, you know, sometimes veterans won't do it for themselves. But if you say, hey, if something happens to you, your spouse may get benefits. Do you want to explore what benefits your spouse may get should something happen to you? So it's like, it's, uh, it's, um, you know, one of the things I, we can offer you if you're interested in learning more is really education. There are so many different ways to like understanding military culture, you know, understanding the different era of veterans, like our Vietnam veterans, if we think about the context in which they came home and had zero supports. And, you know, many of those veterans are still like not engaged in services. Don't self-identify, including my own father-in-law. Um, it took like four years for him to really talk about his experience and be willing to say, okay, I'm going to go through the process of just exploring. It is a process and you want, you want support and need kind of um, guides and we can, we can be that, but um, really veterans will be, uh, or service members, family members, they just appreciate, you know, you asking, right? Have you or a service member ever, or have you or a family member ever served in the military, right? Um, getting to know who are the veterans or service members in you, in your communities, your neighbors, the people you work with. Um, so starting those conversations, just, allows us really to get to know the folks around us. And then, you know, what do you do next? Well, we want to be that next step. You don't have to know everything about benefits, but we can support you and the families that you serve. Nicole, many of the people that are on the call or will be listening later um, are actively involved in uh, issues around caregiving and or um, uh, helping people prepare um, for end of life through um, um, advanced care directive preparation for um, you know, facing serious um, illness. When I say those lines of um, business, what, what comes to mind with what you can offer to those individuals? Yes. And I see a question in the, the chat too, about like, how do we work with our veteran service officers? Um, and I think that's really important. Number one, every county in North Carolina and every state is different, but North Carolina, every county has a veteran service officer. And it's really important kind of to start with them. We absolutely um, work in tandem with them. Uh, when I think of, you know, end of life, um, really grateful to, um, you know, our hospice teams uh, connected to our hospitals um, actually have quite a bit of education in veterans um, or, they, or have gotten the education that working with veteran families. Um, just like with anything else, we all know how important it is to get our affairs in order. But when we're healthy, we're not thinking about it. And these are the things we can kind of push off. Um, so, uh, 
when someone comes to us, we are going to invite them to do a benefits eligibility screen with a veteran service officer. Um, the veteran service officers, I mean, they get a ton of education. It's ongoing on how to um, understand like benefits and entitlements. Um, and it, uh, the laws are constantly changing as well. So um, it's really important that individuals, you know, go back, stay engaged in this process of understanding benefits. So for example, um, you know, there's new legislation. At, have you been exposed to burn pits? Were you ever exposed to burn pits, right? While deployed? Um, are you a part of the registry? Um, you know, have you experienced military sexual trauma? Um, you know, these are these are things where um or the um eligibility and benefits continue to expand. And um, your benefits officers are going to be able to walk you through that very convoluted process in understanding, you know, what someone might be available for today. Um, they also um, support individuals get connected to the VA, get enrolled in the VA. Um, the VA, you can complete advanced directives uh, for those who are eligible to be enrolled at the VA. Um, what I would say for those who are not eligible or for um, many family members, and we can talk about the caregivers specifically, um, and I'm going to just put a pin in that right now, but we, we do work with hospitals and those who are qualified to do those advanced directives and encourage individuals to walk, work with primary care to get those advanced directives in place. Um so whether it's, you know, our local hospital systems, the VA, um, you know, the local managed care entities. Um, so we have a list of folks who, who can do that. Um, it, veterans who are like service connected, 70% um, or more, um, you know, their spouse or their caregiver can go through a process. The VA has benefits for caregivers. And so that is a process in and of itself to identify yourself as a caregiver, understand what, um, what resources are there for caregivers. And we help caregivers kind of walk through that process as well, because the VA is a really good caregiver program that includes some financial assistance as well as some health care uh, for themselves. So, Nicole, we've got questions in the chat, and we also have uh, two spouses. Uh, one individual says, as a spouse of an active duty Army soldier, thank you for your work. Another listener says, another spouse here of a disabled Vietnam veteran, U.S. Marine Corps, thank you uh, so much. Um, and a um, couple of questions we have, like two minutes that maybe you can say uh, a few words about. Do you work with all veteran services, service eras, uh, people uh, coming back from all uh, time frames? And do you work with veterans aging in place? So yes, we work with we work with all veterans, all service eras, all discharge statuses. Um, and what we would say is that eligibility will depend on those things though. When you served, um, so eligibility meaning we work with the VA and all our partners, all community partners. And every partner has different eligibility criteria. Our job is to know what those are or find out the answers and work with the veteran and their family to figure out those, you know, what this individual may qualify for. So, for example, veterans aging in place. Um, I mean, we are a hub and we will work with a family to identify like the right social worker or team to follow an individual. We have a couple teams in house that follow families over time, uh, but we work to identify, you know, 
if for a veteran who wants to age in place, okay, what resources? The VA, if they're eligible, offers a ton of resources to support like that group. Um, quick, yes or no, do you, um, do you help veterans apply for disability benefits? So we connect um, veterans to like our veteran service officers who actually walk them through the, the steps of applying okay. and help them mitigate. Excellent. Yes. So if someone on listening wants to get in touch with you or Veterans Bridge Home, what's the best way to do that? So you can go to our website, veteransbridgehome.org. I will put my email in the chat as well. Um, there is a get assistance request um, button that you can click at the top of our website. And I would say that is the best place to send veterans, service members, or their family members to get connected to our care team. Um, there is also an info at like um, contact us. And there's also a form if you want to reach out to us with any questions or concerns, you can uh, push that contact us button and uh, we'll, we would be delighted to get back with you and we want to collaborate with you and thank you for so much for all you do. I look forward to learning more, um, but we want to collaborate with you to serve um, our military and veteran families. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nicole, um, for your service again and for your continued service to veterans. And everyone listening, as you fire up your grills or you head out of town or you gather with your friends and family this Memorial Day weekend, I uh, trust that the time we've spent together this morning um, is, gives you an even greater appreciation for armed services. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, until next time. Thank you all. Well. Take good care. Bye-bye.